We revel in the terror grab bag of all the magical ways to get snuffed in space, almost as much as we celebrate the giant brass backbones of the people who travel there. We've already talked about all the scary ways that astronauts can die in space. My personal recurring Hail Mary full of grace, please don't let me die in space, nightmare is orbital debris. We're talking about a vast collection of spent rockets, dead satellites, flotsam, jetsam, lagging, and derelict. It's not a short list. NASA figures there are 21,000 bits of junk bigger than 10 centimeters, 500,000 particles between 1 and 10 centimeters, and more than 100 million smaller than 1 centimeter. Sound familiar, humans? This is our high tech, sci fi, great Pacific garbage patch. Sure, a tiny rivet or piece of scrap foil doesn't sound very dangerous, but consider the fact that astronauts are orbiting the Earth at a velocity of about 28,000 kilometers per hour. And the tang packets, uneaten dehydrated ice cream, and astronaut poops are also traveling at 28,000 kilometers per hour. And then think about what happens when they collide. Yikes! Or yuck. Here's the International Space Station Solar Array. See that tiny hole? Embiggen and clarinosticate. That's a tiny puncture hole made in the array by a piece of orbital crap. The whole station is pummeled by tiny pieces of space program junk drawer contents. Back when the space shuttle was flying, NASA had to constantly replace the windows because of the damage they were experiencing from the orbital equivalent of Dennis the Menace hurling paint chips, fingernail clippings, and frozen scabs. And that's just little pieces of paint. What can NASA do to keep Sandra Bullock safe? from the larger, more dangerous chunks that could tear the station a new entry hatch. So for starters, NASA and the US Department of Defense are constantly tracking as much of the orbital debris as they can. They know the position of every piece of debris larger than a softball, which I think as far as careers go would be grossly underestimated for its coolness and complexity of cocktail party. So what do you do for a living? Me? Oh, I'm part of the program which tracks orbital debris to keep astronauts safe. So you track our space garbage? Uh, actually, never mind. I'm, I'm an accountant. Furthermore, they're tracking everything in low Earth orbit, where the astronauts fly down to a size of 5 centimeters. That's 21,000 discrete objects. NASA then compares the movements of all these objects and compares it to the position of the space station. If there's any risk of a collision, NASA takes preventative measures and moves the space station to avoid the debris. The ISS has thrusters of its own, but it can also use the assistance of spacecraft which are docked to it at the time, such as the Russian Soyuz capsules. NASA is ready to make these maneuvers at a moment's notice, if necessary, but often they'll have just a few days notice and give the astronauts time to prepare. Plus, who doesn't love a close call? For example, in some alerts, the astronauts have gotten into their Soyuz escape craft ready to abandon the station if there's a catastrophic impact. And if they have even less warning, the astronauts have to just hunker down in some of the station's more sturdy regions and wait out the debris flyby. Now, this isn't speculation and overcautious nannying on NASA's part. In 2009, an Iridium communications satellite was smashed by a dead Russian Cosmos 2251 military satellite. The collision destroyed both satellites instantly. And as icing on this whirling, screaming, metallic orbital terror cake, it added 2,000 new chunks of debris to the growing collection. Now, most material was in a fairly low orbit, and much of it has already been slowed down by the Earth's atmosphere and burned up. But this wasn't the first time two star crossed satellites with a love that could not be had a shrapnel fountain suicide pact. And I promise it won't be the last. Each collision adds to the total amount of debris in orbit and increases the risk of a runaway cascade of orbital collisions. So we should never underestimate the bravery and commitment of astronauts. They strap themselves to massive explosion tubes and weather the metal squalls of Earth orbit in tiny steel life rafts. So would you be willing to risk all that debris for a chance to fly in orbit? Tell us in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Never miss an episode by clicking subscribe. Our Patreon community is the reason these shows happen. And we'd like to thank Steve Heistand 
Cordy Cook, and the rest of the members who support us in making great space and astronomy content. Members get advanced access to episodes, extras, contests, and other shenanigans with Jay, myself, and the rest of the team. Want to get on the action? Click here. This is our high-tech, sci-fi, great garbage 